Hey gang, what's up? Hope everybody's having a good day out there today. Welcome back to Late Night here in the Tackle Room. Much appreciate you guys checking today's video out. And today we are going to talk about how to put trailer hooks on your spinner baits, buzz baits, chatter baits, whatever you use a trailer hook on. Because in my opinion, 90% of the people out there make a huge mistake about how they rig their trailer hooks. And I'm going to give you guys some really good tips and advice that will help you not only uh, get more bites, but land more of the bites that you get with a any bait that has a trailer hook on it. And real quick, also, I want to remind you guys, if you're interested in any of these baits we're talking about today, I'll include the bait works link in the description. Because they got just a full line of everything we're talking about. If you use that link uh, that I put in the description, that's a good way to help the channel out. And you can also get you some of the block of old school jigs there. Uh, that'd much, be much appreciated as well. Okay, guys, we'll get into this a little bit here. Now, um, Spinner bait, <clears throat> one of the things about spinner baits and buzz baits and that type of stuff is I if I can get away with not using a trailer hook, I like I don't I don't like to use a trailer hook because I tell you one thing about this, what I figured I found out in bass fishing, and a lot of this is found out through practice. It's like if you're fishing a spinner bait or a buzz bait, you will get more bites on it with no trailer hook on it. There's something about it, but it's like I bet my bites go down probably 25% if I've got a trailer hook on. That's got to be something with a visual. If the, I don't know, you guys can goof on that or whatever, but I've seen it over four, I've been fishing for bass for four decades, guys. I've seen this. My strikes go down if I have a trailer hook on there. But sometimes you, it's it works out into your favor if you have a less bites, but you land more of the fish on a trailer hook because you're getting those fish they are nipping at it, short strike, and that type of stuff. So a lot of times, there can it can be an offset on how that works there. So um, that's one of the things you need to consider. Okay, guys. First of all, I'm going to show you guys the wrong way to put a trailer hook on, and it's the way that most people do it. Most people get a trailer hook, and th this is the Gamagatsu. Guys, this is the absolutely my favorite trailer. This is the new Gamagatsu G Finesse trailer hook. We'll talk about it here in a little bit later, but. The biggest mistake guys make is they they have like a rubber keeper over like that where they slide the, the point of the hook through this uh, the middle of this rubber keeper like this. I'm going to show you guys why you do not want to do this. This is how most people rig their trailer hooks. Okay, they, so they rig it like this and the trailer hook is stiff like that. It's, it, it's not moving. It's just completely stiff. This is how most people fish it. The problem you have with this is not only this looks doesn't look near as realistic in the water as if the tra if the if the trailer's flapping around, which I'll show in a second, but inevitably this what's happened is you'll cast this thing out there, and it it'll get crooked like that. This is how it winds up more than not. It does not stay straight in line with your bait like that. Like it like when you put it on there, it always gets knocked off to the side from hitting the water or casting. So you're you're, it's going through the water like this. So guys, stop. If you're using this type of a setup here, stop doing that. Do not use that. I'm going to show you guys what to use. We Actually, I did a video on this. It's been a long time ago. So I'm giving you guys a little bit more info, but if you guys have seen this before, I think we did repeat this. Um, what you want to do, this is, this is a piece of just a rectangular piece of plastic off just a gallon, just a water jug. Just the you know the gallon of milk jug or water jug whatever that you you can get anywhere. I like the clear one, so I I I keep a gallon jug of water in the boat with me all the time, so I use it out of that. So what you want to do is cut you a little square off of it like that. Okay, put your trailer hook back on, and then you're going to put this piece of square piece right over it. I'm going to poke it poke it right through there. And get a hold of it here. So it's going to look like that. And then, whoops. That's goofed up there, guys. One second here, a little bit of a technical error. <laughs> this is what you get with a live video here. Okay, I'll put, put that back over there. Put it back on. Got it like that. 
where it's sitting on there. And then we take our pair of pliers and you just want to take some of that off of there. Just clip it around all four sides. <clears throat> you don't need all the extra plastic sticking around there. So I, I trim it back as like as small as I can get. I want the least amount of visual in there. I'll show you what it looks like when we get done here. So I've got just a little piece on there like that. So see what this does is allows this trailer to swing freely. And I just think there's something more natural about that trailer swinging around free than it's just super sticking out there straight. It's always going to be completely in line with your bait. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. It's completely in line with your hook like that. It's never going to get off to one side. And another advantage of it is if you get one of those fish that hits that trailer hook like that, and they just got the trailer hook and nothing else in their mouth, when they come up and jump with this bait, they don't have the leverage of this thing being stationary. So you've got a lot more freedom of movement as far as it gives the bass less of a chance to throw this just because of the, the pivot on it like that. But this is exactly how you want to rig your trailer hook like that. Now, another thing I'll tell you guys about trailer hooks is don't get carried away with too big of a trailer hook. This actually is a little bit too big. This is a three yacht right here on a smaller bait like this. It's sort of an overkill. This is actually one that I would use like on a three quarter or one ounce bait. But you want to use a trailer hook that's really smaller than your main hook there. So try to stay small as you can get away with. I mean, you're going to just get more bites with a smaller trailer hook because of the visual with it. But anyway, guys, that's just a quick tip like that. That's really going to help you guys out. I think also, like I said, it's going to help you get more bites simply because of the, free, the swing and free. I think it's a little bit more of a visual attractor. You're going to land more fish when that fish hits because it's, it's going to flex like that. And you're not, that, and another thing about why you're going to get more bites is you're not going to have this thing running through the water like that looking completely fake. So. Give it a try, guys. You can do it on your buzz baits and your spinner baits both. Um, I've experimented with a lot. I've experimented with trailer hooks a ton. <clears throat> this is by far the best system that I've ever used to come up with. So give it a try. I think it'll help you guys have a little bit more success. Uh, we'll talk to you guys later. See you.